Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I used craft snow two ways in card making. But first, I want to remind you to follow me across social media if you haven't already. Those links are going to be down in the description box below. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe to my channel down there as well. And if you like this video, you can click the thumbs up button. That always helps so much. So I found this craft snow in the dollar section at Target. It was a dollar for this very big pack of it. And a little bit of this stuff in crafting goes a very, very long way. So I only picked up one bag. Now this is like a fine plastic particle type thing. It's really fun to play around with and I've got a few different ways that I'm going to use it. I'll make two different cards today. The first one I'm going to go ahead and start off with this die. This is from Craft and Desert Divas. It's the inside scalloped rectangle die I believe. If I am wrong on things that I'm talking about here, especially die sets, all those are going to be linked down in the description box below so you can easily find what I'm working with here. Now next I'm going to use this die also from Craft and Desert Divas and this is just a little border with some houses and trees. It's a nice little winter scene. You could also make it a summer scene, whatever. I'm using it for a winter scene today. I went ahead and cut out the inside of that rectangle and that is going to fit right back into its place for a little die cut inlay look. And I've got my little house and trees on the top there for a nice little scene. Now I have this leftover piece on the top here. So I'll go ahead and use that to cut a flag banner that will hold my sentiment later on. But while I have my die cut machine out, I like to go ahead and get everything die cut and ready to go. So for the little top, the border, I want to go ahead and color up those houses and trees. I'm using my alcohol markers. You could use inks. You could use colored pencils. You could use whatever you wanted to here. I like these because they're nice and vibrant and it's very quick as well. So I started off with the roofs on all the houses and I colored those in with a brown marker. Then every other house I'm going to go ahead and color in with a little bit of navy blue. And then for the other ones that I left, I'll go ahead and color those in with a little bit of yellow. Then for the trees, I'll go ahead and color those in with some green. Now for everything else, I use my Dick Blick Studio brush markers. For the little trees, I went ahead and grabbed these Artist Loft markers. They're from Michaels. I do have a review coming soon on these, so be sure to stay tuned. But for now, I just want to go ahead and color in these trees. I've been playing around with them. I don't like to review something as soon as I buy it. I like to give myself time to see if I really, truly love it before I make any decisions on it. So I'm going to go ahead and make this into a shaker card. So I'm taking that frame that I die cut from white cardstock and I'll go ahead and lay some acetate on top of it or on the back of it. I have added some adhesive and then I just lay the acetate down and it's ready to go. Now I can go ahead and start assembling the whole of my shaker card. So with any shaker card, you need to go ahead and put some fun foam around there. But first, sorry, I, it's been a long time since I made these cards. I'm going to go ahead and inlay that piece right on top there. That'll save me from kind of puncturing my acetate later on, just laying it down while it's still on a flat surface and it's not raised up at all. So I added some adhesive to the back of that. Then I'll go ahead and pop that in just like a puzzle piece. And I've got my little house border right on the front there ready to go. Now, like I said, I want to make a shaker card and I want to make this a nice snowy scene. So I added the fun foam all along the edges, or this is foam tape, excuse me. And I'll go ahead and I've got my little center that is wide open. Now, if you wanted to keep the snow more towards the top, you could always put another piece there right on the bottom to kind of keep that towards the top, keep your section towards the top. However, I wanted to give mine the effect of kind of a snow globe so everything disappears when you hold it up. And then whenever you tip it over, you can kind of get the snow to fall down. Then I'll go ahead and prep my surface. I like to use my embossing bag inside to get rid of any static. Then I'll go ahead and add some of that craft snow. Now I am adding quite a bit here and I'm just going to load this up. I wanted this to be very snowy and with each little piece that I'm putting in or each little handful I'm putting in, I just give it a shake to kind of level it all out, make sure it's evenly dispersed. Once I get enough in there, I'm going to go ahead and start removing that backing tape backing paper off the foam tape. You need to go ahead and be careful with this. Um, if you shake it, 
your snow will kind of fly everywhere, stick to your adhesive, and it just won't work out. So make sure that you're being careful, not jerking this around as you're moving that, removing that backing paper. Once I had that removed, I'm going to go ahead and place some vellum on the back of this. I'm using vellum today because I want a nice white surface in the background, but I didn't want to use any more acetate. I use the heat safe acetate that can get a little pricey so just putting that vellum on the back there gives a nice sky background first of all and it's also going to allow the white from my card base to shine through it's going to look like basically nothing is there but give a nice backdrop for the snow I went ahead and put a large piece on the back of that then just cut around it that saves me a lot of hassle with trying to line anything up but there, I've got this nice snowy shaker card. When I tip it over, all the snow goes to the top. Then I can shake it and all the snow will fall back down towards the bottom. And it's kind of like a snow globe, which I absolutely love. Now, once I had that finished, I needed to go ahead and adhere this to a card base. I'm using double-sided adhesive. I did not put any on that open area that will show through. So just make sure you're doing it along the edges, anywhere where you have white cardstock to cover up that adhesive that's going down. Then I'm placing everything on an A2 side folding card base that I'm using horizontally. And the final thing left to do is add my sentiment. So I grabbed this Prayers stamp and die set from Hero Arts, and I'm just building up the sentiment, sending you prayers, and I'm stamping that down with some VersaFine Claire ink. This is in Twilight. This is in a nice navy blue color that matches the navy blue on the houses. I added some foam tape to the back of that as well, and I'll pop that up right on the bottom there. And I've got this card ready to go. That finishes it off. It was super, super easy, and I love the way it turned out. That craft snow in the back really gives it a nice snow globe look. And I love the little houses in front. Keeping everything really monochromatic, too, allowed that shaker to be kind of the focal point, which is so much fun. I know shaker cards are absolutely nothing new, but they are so much fun to give. They're one of my kids' favorite kind of cards that I make, so I always try to make a, quite a few of them, to be honest. Now for my next card, I'm going to go ahead and start off with some die cutting. I'm using this die, again, from Craft and Desert Divas. All supplies are going to be listed down in the description box, just a little reminder. So if you have any questions about die sets, that kind of thing. I am using this die, like I said. It's the Crazy Stitched Rectangles, I believe is the name of it. I'm not quite sure on that. But I'm going to cut that three different times from white cardstock. Then I've got these Mountain Border dies. And I'm going to go ahead and first start off on one of my little rectangles here. And I'm coming about two-thirds of the way up, and I'll go ahead and run that through. Then I've got this smaller mountain border that kind of fits right in the center. I'll go ahead and line that up on my piece of cardstock there. I'll remove that mountain border that I had die cut first just as a guide. And then I'll go ahead and cut my final piece of cardstock here. Now this didn't go all the way across as you could see, so I cut the center first and then I'll go ahead and line it up on the right and left side with my die cutting machine and go ahead and send that through each time. This is just a nice way to get it to stretch all the way across the card, but still keep it to where it's in between each one of those uh, mountains that I die cut that are going to be in the background on this. So I like to keep it nice and even. So doing this just allows me to stretch that out across the card. I went ahead and ran that through on the left side, and there I've got my little border that's going to go in front. And each one is die cut on one of those rectangles that I cut, so everything's going to match. All the stitching will match across the entire card. So I've got my back set of mountains there, and then I've got my front set of mountains, all with the same stitching, all lines up perfectly. It's ready to go. Now, one of those top sets of the mountains, I'm going to go ahead and just use that scrap and die cut a flag banner from that. That will be for my sentiment whenever I'm done. Now, each mountain needs its little mountain top with little snow on it. So in order to do this, I'm going to take some vellum. I applied some of the Suk Wong. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. It's score tape, essentially. And I've got some 6x6 six six sheets. I cut down a little piece of it. If you don't have that, you can just take your regular 
tape adhesive and put a few strips of that down onto the vellum as well. I'm using vellum because I want it to look like a snowy mountaintop. I don't want any color behind the snow, which is why I'm using this. It's going to give a nice see-through look. Now you can die cut from your strips of adhesive and that will work just as well, but I'm going to go ahead and use my little piece that I did with my 6x6 score tape. I just cut a little strip of that and put that down on some vellum. Then I'll run that through my die cutting machine several times and I ran that through with the mountain die top. For my mountains, I want to give them a little bit of color, not a lot, so I'm using the VersaFine Clear ink. This is the nice gray color, and I'm using these makeup blending brushes to really blend that down. Now, I love this ink for blending. It's a pigment ink, so it sits on top of the paper, and it really, really blends well. You can move this around and move this around and move this around. Even if you go in harsh by accident like I did here, you can continue to just kind of buff over that, and everything's going to continue to move around and blend out, and it will eventually soften up those edges. So you can't really make too many mistakes with this ink. I'll go ahead and grab some sheer shimmer. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Spritz. And spritz that on top of the mountains. I'm doing this over a box so I don't get glitter everywhere. I use that in the frost color. Now that gives a little bit of shimmer to these mountains. Nothing drastic, but it's just a nice little addition. Here, once I remove my little my light is very blinding, but it gives a great amount to see that shimmer on the mountains. Now it's time to pop everything up onto the little card panel. This is why I cut three of those die cuts. You need one for the background and then two for the mountains. So I went ahead and put my first layer down. I did regular adhesive on the bottom and then on the mountain tops I did some foam tape. Then on my front layer I'm doing all foam tape across the entire thing on the bottom and the top. So I'll go ahead and remove all the backing paper on each one of those pieces and pop that right in front. There I've got my two sets of mountains and my little sky background there all ready to go. Everything matches because it's all done from the same die cut. Now for each one of my little mountain tops, I'm going to go ahead and start off by removing the backing paper. This can be a little bit tricky. Just take your time. I do have my little quick sticks tool that helps a little bit, but your fingernails also work. Just don't stab yourself like I did trying to remove those papers. Then I just dip that once the adhesive is um once I've removed the backing paper from the adhesive, I just pop that right down into the craft snow and pick up as much as I can and then kind of brush off the edges. Whatever isn't adhered will kind of fall back off. Then I can go ahead and use some liquid adhesive to pop each one of those little snowy mountain tops on top of the mountains themselves. Using that vellum doesn't add any color to the snow. It allows it to look like a true snowy mountaintop on top, but without all the mess of putting glue down and then kind of adhering the snow to it, this just gets everything to stick. That score tape adhesive is super strong, so once you push that snow into it, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to flake off and fall off. If, especially if you brush off the pieces that aren't quite stuck over your little bowl there, it's all going to stay attached to the card and not flake off on you. I'm using this Nuvo adhesive to attach each one of these little mountain tops. You can use whatever adhesive you want. Just make sure that it is a very strong adhesive to make sure these stay on, especially if you're going to send this through the mail. Now these mountain tops come in two different sizes in that die set. And that die set is also from Craft and Desert Divas, but I die cut a few of each size. So I'm just kind of switching it up and eyeballing it of what mountain top I want to go on which mountain, making sure that I don't have too many of the same kind on each one or so close to each other, I guess I should say. I'll continue adding on these last little few mountain tops to each one of my full mountains, but on my bottom 
little row there, I had two mountains that were kind of half off the paper. Now I did still die cut full mountain tops for those and I'll go ahead and attach them as full mountain tops. And then later, once they've had time to dry, I'll go ahead and put an acrylic block on top of this to dry as well. Make sure everything stays nice and tight on top of there, especially with that slick vellum, you wanna make sure you give it plenty of time to dry. Once it dries, then I can use my scissors to just snip that off and make sure it's nice and flush with the card base. I attached that panel onto an A2 side folding card base that I made from white cardstock. Then I grab that same prayer sentiment, grab the thinking of you, and I'm stamping that down in the morning mist versifying clear ink that I used to blend on my mountains. I did just kind of twist that sentiment a little bit on my acrylic block to make sure it fit that curve of the flag banner. I added some fun foam on the back of that. I'll pop that above the mountains and that finishes off that card. So there I've got my nice little thinking of you card all ready to go. Here's a few closer looks at that. I love the snowy mountaintops on that. Another monochromatic card, but adding that little bit of texture with the snow really helps those mountains pop out, adds a little bit more interest to this card, and it's just so much fun. Plus, using that strong adhesive, I know these are going to stay put and not flake or fall off, even if I send this through the mail. So even after these two cards, I still have a ton of craft snow left over. So I'm sure I'll be doing more cards in the future with them and finding new ways to do them, even not on winter cards. Here's a few final looks at these two fun cards using the craft snow. So I've got my shaker card on the right there and my little mountains on the left and a few final pictures of both of them as well. Now, even though I made both of these as ascending prayers and thinking of you cards, you could easily turn these into Christmas cards for next year if you wanted to, but I'm going to keep these very plain and simple today. That is going to do it for me today. On the left side of your screen, there are going to be links that you can click on. You can also subscribe to my channel over there. Be sure to head down to the description box for all those links. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.